So in this video, we're going to look at market internals. We're going to look at what market internals are and how we use them uh, in our training in this uh, in the smart money room. So first of all, what are market internals? So, uh, I mean, if, when you look at an index or just look at the market as a whole, right? You just look at the price. What is ES doing? What is SPX doing? What is NDX doing? Um, but in, in reality, right, we often forget that the market is actually composed of stocks, right? In the SPX, there are 500 stocks. In the um, NYSE index, there are close to 3,000 stocks. So when we just look at what price is doing of, of the index, uh, we don't really, um, we're not really getting the full picture. Right? Because it is possible for like a few stocks to push up the index um, without broader participation. So when you look at market internals, like what all the different stocks are doing, uh, there are various market internal measures. So when we look at that, we kind of get an idea of what's going on under the hood of the market, so to speak. Right? Is price actually supported by the majority of stocks? Or is it just a few stocks pushing it up, right? So this kind of information helps us to better gauge the health of the market and, you know, base our trading decisions off of that, right? So there are different type of market internals uh, and the, the most obvious one or the most commonly used one is um, advanced decline data, right? So that is um, in, in Thinkorswim, you can actually put in a dollar ad, uh, what it shows, what it gives you is the NYC advancing issues minus declining issues, right? The difference between those two. So when you look at that number or the, or the trend during the day, it kind of gives you an idea of what was going on. So for example, when you see like a day, a day like today where price is going down, right? You see the internals also, ad is also going down along with it. So price is actually the downtrend is is supported by internals that's what this chart is showing um, and you know there are certain points of time where you can spot divergences for example price is continuing to go up while internals are making ad is making lower highs you know that is generally a good sign that the uptrend is going to fall apart right so those are the different types of information that you can get from internal data so ad is one of them uh, then the other one is the um, high low data. So that is what I uh, we use mostly in this room. So what that is, is uh, the new highs over the last one month uh, minus the new lows over the last one month for today. Right. So you see a minus five, five, three uh, value over here for today. Basically, what that means is that you have net of minus 500 plus stocks that are forming new lows today, you know, for over the new lows for over the last one month, right? So we get this um, value. I call it as Nile 1M, the Nile 1M intraday value for today. Um, every day at the close of the day, we take in that data and I input that into a spreadsheet which you can see over here. Um, I just use a spreadsheet because it is much easier for me to, uh, you know, get a more hands-on hands feel of the data, right? So I just um, put it in. So for example, today we're gonna, we're gonna put in the minus 500 value over here. And that tells us, um, you know, it, it, it using that value on a day-to-day -day basis is how we form the Nile 1M core indicator. Right, so I put in the daily values over here that is cumulatively added over here. We have an EMEA over here. So we plot the EMEA and the cumulative value against time and we get a chart like this, which is our uh, Nile 1M core indicator that we track in the room. So this indicator, I mean, it, it is actually very simple. You can look at this chart and probably figure it out, right? The green is SPX, the blue line is the cumulative value of the Nile 1M, and the red line, it's its EMEA, right? The 19 EMEA. Uh, so when the blue crosses below the red, we have a sell signal. When blue crosses back above the red, we have a buy signal, 
right so this is a core um, this is the core indicator that we track in the room obviously this is this is very slow um, so from there I had to dig down to lower levels right and that's how I came up with the micro one and the micro two indicators so micro two indicator is nothing but the same chart that we saw earlier which was on a daily basis micro two is on an hourly basis so as you can see micro two went to a cell early today uh, we were expecting that to happen so um, you know it's been on a buy for a very long time it captured a lot of the uptrend it just went to a cell today um, early morning right and when you that is the micro two uh, in nothing but the Nile 1M on an hourly basis. When you go to the micro one, we do not have a graphical representation of that. But what the micro one is, I'm, I kind of show that over here with the greens and the reds. Here the micro one is on a sell. It went to a buy again, again back on a sell since yesterday, right? From 29007, it's been on a sell. So the micro one is nothing but uh, the down ticks on the Nile 1M indicator, right? On the cumulative value of the Nile 1M indicator. So as long as it's ticking higher, micro one stays on a buy. When it starts ticking lower, we have micro micro one on a sell. I've not shared the extra uh, uh, the exact math behind this, but on a very high level, that's what it is. Right? It is the micro one is basically the momentum measure of the Nile 1M indicator. As long as it's ticking higher, we stay on a buy on the micro one. When it starts ticking lower, we go to a sell on the micro one, right? So the micro one and micro two are the two lower level, um, lower time frame levels of the Nile 1M indicator, right? And those two form two of the legs of our trading system, right? So those are the, that is the Nile 1M part of this. Now let's go and look at the secret indicator, right? Which is the third part of our um, trading system. So the secret indicator also, um, I cannot, uh, I've not shared the math behind this because it's uh, the, the creator has asked me not to, um, but regardless, the secret indicator is very simple. Uh, we've got the red dots over there, which is the secret indicator and the black dots, um, which it's its um, accompaniment, right? And we need both the black dots and the red dots to tick higher for trend up. We need them both to tick lower for trend down. And when they're both ticking in opposite directions, we call it as trend neutral, right? So that is the third leg of our trading uh, system. Uh, so we've got the micro one, we've got the micro two, and we've got the secret indicator. Those three uh, together form our um, trading system. So the rules are very simple. Um, we need, we need uh, the, let's go to this page. So, so far we've looked at what market internals are, and we also looked at um, three of our indicators that we use for our trading decisions. Uh, the micro one, the micro two, and the secret indicator combo. So next we're going to look at how these three tie in together and um, form our uh, rules for our trading. So um, basically it's very simple. We were using a different um, rule set before, um, but you know, this one looks looks better after a little bit more of back testing and analysis. So this is the one that we're using right now. Basically, we just need two out of the three indicators to support either the buy or the sell side. So um, if we have any two out of these three indicators supporting a buy, we have a buy signal on the composite uh, um, signal. And if we have any two out of the three supporting a sell or on a sell, we have the composite signal short. So right now, if you look over here, we've got all three on buy. So we've got the composite signal long, and also we've got a current trade on that is long. Um, so uh, let's say uh, the micro one is on a buy, and the micro two and the secret indicator combo are on sells, um, let's say. Uh, th that would mean that the composite signal would be short at that point of time. So any two out of three, um, supporting one side, that's what our composite signal will be, right? 
okay so now just because the composite signal is long does not mean that we need to have a current trade on long um, we also require a separate indicator which i'm calling as the odds indicator to support the trade so basically what the um, odds indicator is it is it just shows us okay what is the probability for um, the current composite signal to be successful or not right so based on that we decide whether to take a trade what exactly the odds indicator is i'm not going to share that um, that is proprietary uh, but it, it is um, i would i would consider it as just something that supports the um, um, it's, it's just a picture of what the trend is at that particular point of time so let's say uh, the composite signal is long right now but let's say the odds is not good enough for the trade right or the odds is low so what that would mean is that we would not take a trade right and we would wait for either the composite signal to go short so that we can take a trade um, or we would wait for the odds to actually come back and support the um, the composite signal right so i actually share that in in um, my uh, reports that I post. Uh, so if you look over here, this is a, a typical report that I post every evening and also in the morning daily reports. So over here it shows, okay, the composite signal is long. Um, it's an acceptable odds trade. So current position is long, right? So the converse would be uh, composite signal long, low odds trade, current, po current position is, is flat right so the these are the possibilities that we have so we we um if we go to the system snapshot okay this is what we have over here so this shows um all the different trades that we have um we we had a very bad period of whipsaw over here but um, usually the system is very stable um, and you know we stay in a trade for uh, you know usually it goes on several weeks um, but there are all, all, always going to be uh, periods of higher volatility where we are going to get shaken out of the trade more uh, so if you look at this particular trade uh, we oh, we um, went long on the 15th of July uh, and that's when we had all three of these um, indicators going uh, to buys. Uh, so we got the composite signal also going to long. And because the odds also supported the long side, we went back in long. And we are still long, holding on to that position. All right. So uh, this, these two uh, sheets I share out every day. Uh, so you can look at the current status of the system, what the odds are, do they support the long trade, and because they support the long trade, we are currently long right now. Looks like the market just opened. Um, anyhow, so this is how uh, the, the whole system works. Uh, we operate off of these three indicators. So now... Um, if we, uh, I'm going to also post post the results, the back test, all of that later. So if you, I'm not going to share the odds like this in a in a sheet, but then just want to show how this works. So if you, if we come here, um, so this is a little bit older data. It only has until until um, June, but basically this sh kind of shows how the how the system works. So for example, um, let's look at this one, uh, 27th of May, uh, the composite signal is long. Um, so we actually go long at 30.37. We hold the long trade until the 10th of June, where we actually went back low. Um, the odds went to low. At that point of time, we exit the trade. Right. And again, it had a whipsaw over here, it went high and then it's back low again. But then over this point, the composite signal shifted to short. So now we are on a short um, composite signal based on our indicators because two of them are down. 
but at the same time it's a low odds trade so we never take the short position and we actually um, kept ourselves out of some drawdown over here right so that's how the system works we need the composite signal to uh, be on a on a trade either long or short and we need the odds indicator also to support it so it's, uh, those are um, we in i introduced the odds indicator in order to um, reduce a lot of uh, you know, drawdowns or bad trades that we were having with the system where we were potentially going against uh, the predominant trend, right? So the idea of the odds indicator is to make sure that any trade that we take is in direction with what the predominant trend is in the market, okay? So that's pretty much what the system is. 